Welcome to a quick lesson on true bearings. True bearings is another way of giving direction, of describing direction. Uh, so let's get right into it. Now the way it comes, traditionally you have north, east, south and west. Now true bearing is more of a mathematical way. We get rid of the north, east, west, south and we have numbers only. Now the way it works is uh, if you want to give direction, you start measuring from zero degrees. Zero degrees is north. North is said to be zero degrees. And then we don't talk about north, east, south, west at all. It's just going to be from zero and then you start counting clockwise. That's 90 degrees. That's 180 degrees. That's 270 degrees. And you just keep going up. And so really the angle you're after uh, if I were to give, let's turn that option on and see that angle in red, that's the angle you will measure. That's what we're going to use to give direction. So, you know, 224 degrees is going to be this direction. You always start measuring from north, you always measure clockwise, and that's indicated in red. And that's what we use. Um, so let's have a look at some examples. Okay, so you have a question like this. What is the true bearing of the wishing well from Ruby's mine? So it says from Ruby's mine. From is the most important part of the question. From Ruby's mine. Where's Ruby's mine? Ruby's mine is right over there. And then is the we we're looking for wishing well, the direction to the wishing well. The wishing well is this direction. Okay, now imagine that you there's a north line right here. Right, there's a north line right here, and we're going to measure clockwise in this direction. Uh, so there's no feature. So we're just going to measure clockwise like this, go almost all the way around. So it's going to be a, quite a large angle. And let's have a guess at it. Uh, I'm going to guess what, instead of 360, I might make it what, 340, 345? Let's have a go. 345 degrees. We'll check our answer. Oh, hey, we got it right, exactly. Uh, let's try another one. And the next question is, what is the true bearing of the hanging tree from the windmill? From the windmill. So we draw our compass on the windmill. Where is the windmill? There it is. And it says, a uh, hanging tree. Okay. Ah, oh, the hanging tree is there. All right. So you start measuring uh, from the north over here, from the north, and you start measuring clockwise. It's going to be more than 90 degrees, I can tell. So I'm going to guess what? 110 degrees, let's say. 110 degrees. I overestimated, but it was over 90, 98 degrees. I mean, fair enough. Uh, you get the idea. So let's move on to some textbook questions. Okay, so write down the bearings of A from O. So they've already drawn arrows at O. Uh, north, east, south, you don't really need north, north, east, south, west, but whatever. Write down the bearings of A from O as shown in these diagrams. What is the bearing? So if that's 50 degrees, we want true bearings. So we're going to start measuring from north and we go clockwise like so. If that's 50, that's going to be 180 minus 50 because I know the whole thing, straight line, is going to add up to 180. So 180 minus 50 will give me 130 degrees. So I'll write 130 degrees and that's it now you can write t here if you want for true true north it's up to you um, moving on uh, having a look at the next one if this is 70 true bearings means i have to measure that well uh, in order to do that let's change the color of my pen so hopefully you'll be able to see what i mean quicker <coughs> this is 90 this is also 90 that's also 90. 90 plus 90 plus 90 means this is 270. 270 plus that 70 gives me 340 degrees. 340 degrees. And that would be my bearing of A from O. What about this one? Well, that's directly east. That's clearly 90 degrees. I'm going to measure clockwise from north. That's 090 degrees. Three figure bearings. Bearings, true bearings also called three figure bearings. You should always have three numbers. And if there's if it's 90, you write zero nine zero, zero ninety. 
Moving on, let's have a look at another question. A walker leaves camp, so let's say that's camp, and walks a bearing of 250 degrees. Well, I know, it's going from there, right? I know that this would be 270. Because the walker is going 250, it's going to be less, it's going to be around there for 8 kilometers. So 8 kilometers. And the walker is now here. How far west of the camp, how far west of camp is the walker? So walker leaves camp, camp was over there. How far west of the camp are we? We're not concerned about south, we only care about how far west, you know, the walker is. So in other words, that's really what we care about. That's this, this thing over here. And they've labeled it X. How far west of camp, X kilometers, is the walker. Well, I know that's 90 degrees, and we did say that this is 250 degrees. Uh, show all this information on right angle triangle. I mean, we have it there, but let's draw another right angle triangle. And so you have eight kilometers here, and I know this is X. Now, if this is 250 degrees, and I know that this is 180, that's 180, then this must be 70, because 250 minus 180 is 70, and so 70 degrees is what we have. Now I know it says you do not need to solve for x, but we will be solving for x, so I might as well give it a go. Um, with reference to this angle, so it's a soccer tall question, because it's right angle triangle and you have two sides of angle involved, okay? So with reference to that angle, this is the opposite, that is the hypotenuse, so oh, so, remember, so, ka, toa, and so I'm going to set up the sine of the angle is equal to opposite, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 8, multiply both sides by 8, 8, sine 70 is equal to x, x is therefore equal to 8 times 70 around 7.5, 7.5 kilometers. I know it's kilometers because it says x kilometers. Okay, moving on. A bushwalker walks 5 kilometers on a bearing of 150 degrees from point A. So you have point A here, and because it's from point A, I'm going to draw my compass rose thing imagery. 150 degrees, well, it's going to be less than 180. So let's say that is 150 to point B. Let's say that's point B. Okay, find how far east point B is from point A. So all I'm concerned about is how far east it is. East only, not south. So that's all I care about, that bit there. Now if that's 150, I know that north, north, east is perfectly 90 degrees always. And so if that's 90, and the whole thing is 150, that whole thing is 150, 150 minus 90 will give me 60 degrees. So this is 60 degrees. So now that I have a triangle, um, walks five kilometers. So they did walk five kilometers. I didn't put that information earlier, but now you have two sides and an angle, and a right angle triangle. So, with reference to this angle, this is adjacent, and this is hypotenuse. It's a kah question. Sokotoa, kah. Cause of the angle, 60 degrees, is equal to kah adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. Multiply both sides by 5. 5 cos of 60 is equal to x. I don't know, that's going to be 2.5, but just double checking. 5 cos 60 should give me 2.5 x is equal to 2.5. Okay, let's have a look at a, another question, a harder question. Uh, a fishing boat starts from point O and sails 80 kilometers on a bearing of 140 degrees to point B. So that, that's O, 80 kilometers on a bearing of 140. So and that's going to be like this, I'll draw 140. 140 is going to be more than 90, less than 180. So it's going to be something like that. I'll label that point B, and it was 80 kilometers, so I'll write 80 kilometers there. How far east of point O is point B? How far east? So this is exactly, or well, very similar to what I've just done. 
right? So that's east. That's obviously north. So how far east of point O? And that's what I'm after. And I knew, I know that is 140. And this is 90. So 90 minus 140 gives me 50 degrees right there. That is 50 degrees. So I'll just wipe that off so it's not confusing. Um, so setting up my adjacent, uh, adjacent hypotenuse, the so cos of the angle is going to equal to x over 80. 80 multiply both sides by 80. So you have x is equal to 80 cos of 50. And that gives me 51. Uh, give you answer to truism fifty one point four two fifty one point point four two, and it is kilometers so km. All right, approximately. How far south is it? How far south of point O is point B? Well, point B. How far south? Now the only thing I'm going to change the color of my pen. So now I'm only concerned about how far south we are, like this. How far south we are. Now that's still 80, so that the hypotenuse is still 80. That's 90 degrees. Now I want to know this side, how far south it is. I'm not concerned about east, west, or anything. Only thing I care about is how far south it is. Why 80? If this is 50, then this must be 40. And look, and you can do it. You can you can do that question. You can find this is also why. So if you want to reuse the first triangle, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but I'm just going to use this triangle over here to help you think about it in the future because we want to know how far south from north. So we just go down south from north, right? Uh, from the original, from O, sorry, not north, from O. How far south of O? How far south of point O? So I go to O and I go to south. And that's what I'm after. That's 40 degrees. <coughs> so what do I have? With reference to this angle, with reference to that angle there, Y is adjacent, and the hypotenuse, 80, is the hypotenuse. It's a cat again. So now I'm going to do uh, cos of the angle, which is 40 degrees this time, is equal to adjacent, which is Y, over 80, multiply both sides by 80, and you get Y is equal to 80 cos 40. 80 cos 40, and that's going to be 61.28. 61.28 kilometers. Now, what is the bearing of point O from point B? So this is an interesting question. I'll change the color up here once again. What is the bearing of point O from point B? From point B. From is the most important part of the question. From point B. So now I need to go over here and I need to draw my compass rose. And it says, what is the bearing of point O from B? Now I'm going to measure clockwise and uh, that's what I would need to know. Now listen to this carefully. This is a very important tip. All north lines are parallel. So notice that there was a north line there and there is a north line here. Those are parallel. And parallel lines, when you have a line going through parallel lines, then you have the whole co-interior angles, corresponding angles, you know, alternate angles, all that stuff. So hopefully you still remember it uh, because we're going to use that. Okay, so now originally it was what, 140 degrees. This was 140 degrees. If that's 140, this is a co-interior angle to that. And they're gonna add up to 180. Therefore, that must be 40, degree, yeah, 40 degrees. That's 40 degrees. And if this is 40 degrees, then, then this angle uh, I know the whole thing is 360, right? All the way around is 360. But this angle will then be 360 minus 40, which is 320 degrees. So hopefully it didn't get too messy, but that's 320 degrees. So the bearing uh, of point O from point B, 320 degrees. Uh, so there you go. There you have it. Uh, best of luck with the homework.